congratulations. Hello, I'm Finn Henderson. I am a researcher and a producer and an incurable tinkerer. Um, and I'm here to talk to you about gameplay, sort of. Um, what I'm here to do, actually, is ask you a question. Are you playing or are you gaming? That's nonsense. Um, but I'm going to explain it in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Don't worry about it. So this question came from when I was sort of disassociating myself from gaming as a term for incredibly reasonable reasons, I think. I think we're all okay with that. Um, sometimes you don't really want to be a gamer. You just want to be a person who plays games. Um, and I was thinking while I was considering this, is there, is there a difference between the two? I think there is a nuanced difference between gaming and playing, but I was struggling to sort of put it into words. So I started by thinking, well, what do I think of when I think of, you know, um, gaming? And what do I think of when I think of playing? So playing is, you know, fun. Throw yourself down a hill, roll really fast, fall out of a tree. Playing, good, enjoyable. Gaming in my head is a bit more... Shout at the internet, click a thousand buttons, RSI. <laughs> but, but that's not very technical. I assume there's, you know, there's a bit, I can, I can do better. Um, so if we're being really technical, we can bring out your boy Kalwa. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, thanks, researchers in the room. <laughs> um, and he's got, he's got these two terms, if you haven't uh, come across them before, which are Padia and Ludus. And I'm just going to go through them really, really quickly, really quickly. Don't worry about it too much. This is entry-level stuff. Ludus is what I would use on the game end of things. Uh, so his phrase is, to encompass the various games to which, without exaggeration, a civilizing quality can be attributed. Which sounds like absolute tosh. But if you think about it, it means sort of structured. It's, it's a structured form of play. There are explicit rules. Padia is, is more the play side, um, an almost indivisible principle, common to diversion, turbulence, free improvisation, and carefree gaiety, which is going to be my new Twitter bio. <laughs> um, and that's, more, that's more the play side. Um, and that also sounds a bit ridiculous, but welcome to academia. Um, so that, that just, just means a bit, a bit more loose, a bit more having fun. You know, there are, still, there are still rules, don't get me wrong, but they're sort of implicit rules. You're, you're pretending, you're imagining, you're, you're exploring. Um, it's a bit more complicated than that, uh, but I'm not going to go into it because it can get really, really, really boring and uh, quite debatable. So there's some papers, look them up if you hate yourself. But we're, we're going to go for that. It's... it's Paddy and Ludus, it's game and play. And both of them have merits, you know? Sometimes you want challenge, sometimes you want rules, sometimes you want things to be difficult, sometimes you just want to make shit up and roll down a hill until you throw up. You want a balance, you want some game and you want some play. But I've been finding in the gaming world, what I get is more sort of this. Game! Play. <laughs> if, if you want to, if you must behind closed doors, get that disgusting shit out of here. And that's, that's not how it should be, because, you know, and I, it's, I think it's, it's a big thing behind this, this games are for children, all right? Do you know what else is for children? Climbing trees, also really fun. Do you know what else is for children? Alphabet spaghetti, still gonna eat it. Things for kids are great. They're really fun because kids play. And the thing is, like, this is a common misconstruction now. So this is uh, Gonzalez Vasca, another academic, a, a quote um, about Padia, where he says, the, uh, the form of play present in early children, construction kits, games of make-believe, kinetic play. A, all of that sounds amazing. B, adults can do those. Amazingly, it is not forbidden as an adult to make a construction kit or play make-believe for a while. Hence, model aeroplanes and acting. And the thing is, games can have, you know, this is Dwarf Fortress, by the way, games can have elements of all sorts of different kinds of play and fun and interest. Dwarf Fortress is phenomenally complex. I don't believe a single human being on the face of this earth understands this game. But it's really funny, in a way, because it has the best bug fix log of any game of all time. There's a meta game in Dwarf Fortress that is silly and hilarious. Minecraft is full of kinetic play, but a lot of people use it 
to make incredibly structured architectural things. That's fine. There are, you can take play in any direction that you want. It doesn't have to be a game that you game, or you don't have to be playing and only playing. You can, you can make your own game rules while you're playing. You can play while you're gaming. Just mix it up, no one cares. And kids play really well. I'm sure we all remember this game. I say game, I assume it has rules. I don't remember any of them. All I remember is running under a, I think, is that a parachute? Running under a parachute screaming. Those are basically the rules that I remember. Maybe some of you remember the rules to this game. Do not tell me, do not at me, I don't care. But it's really fun. You're moving and you're screaming and everyone's involved and it's, it's enjoyable. And you can have that feeling as an adult, not just by running under a parachute, which, again, I do recommend, but you can have that in your gaming experience. Because, as it turns out, you can have games that have rules and are, you know, more your, more your ludus, if that's how you want to term them. But they're still fun. They still involve a lot of running around and screaming. There's still a lot of movement and joy. There's still a lot of freedom. And some of them are suitable for children and some of them really aren't. But they've all got a... <laughs> They've all got an element of childish play to them. And, and I like that that's becoming more of a thing. And as I was thinking about these games that have childish play, what I was seeing that they have in common is a sort of fuck physics mentality. <laughs> it's about throwing your body around and enjoying yourself. It's about weird, gross fantasy physics world where everything's a bit wobbly and silly and really hard to control. And those games are amazing. And childish in a way that anyone can enjoy and I love that and obviously you know some people just aren't getting it <clears throat> which is fine the lack of voice chat killed the experience for me this is a game that depends a lot on communication this is for Splatoon a game in which you run around painting walls and turn into a squid sure okay how did this game get good reviews this is my um aggravated youtuber voice I don't know it's not even real local co-op. I had to cut this one off because it went on for about five paragraphs. Um, and that, I think, is for Goat Simulator? Maybe someone's really mad about this goat. <laughs> this game becomes very boring after one to two hours and is only partly enjoyable with the repetitious humor afterwards. That's for Octodad. One to two hours. That's a, that's a decent amount of time to have fun. What's bad? about having fun for one to two hours. There's just this really annoying sort of expectation that fun works in certain ways and should work for ages. Rolling down a hill is fun for maybe 10 minutes. And after that, you feel shit. But for those 10 minutes, it's glorious. You don't stop doing it just because it's only good for 10 minutes at a time. So I want to see more of this. And it doesn't have to just be digital games. This is um, The Mashing by James Med. There are some buttons there. You can see there's two charts. I think you can figure out how this game works. You mash the buttons, the chart goes up. One of you wins, one of you loses. Oh no, it's got rules. It's technically a, a ludus game. And I, I hosted this game in arcade I ran last summer. Children fucking love this game. They are all about, they will run full speed across a hall, tripping over their own tiny feet to slam their tiny sticky palms into buttons, screaming wildly. And I want, I want to see adults doing that, to be honest. I want, their parents, when they were forced to play, a bit tentative at first, two fingers, finger pecking at the buttons. And then by the end of it, they're slamming elbows on the buttons, pushing their own tiny toddler out of the way, being like, I'm fucking running this, screaming all the while. They learn to play, they learn to have fun. Adults by themselves were very self-conscious about playing this game until I swanned up and started mashing buttons, staring them in the eyes like, I'm gonna beat you. And then, suddenly, they understand, I'm allowed to have fun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna have fun. Things make us laugh. That's a reason to do it. It made us laugh. And that's the whole reason we played this game. And it was fun for 10 minutes. And those 10 minutes were glorious, and I really, really don't care that that's all I got out of it. And if we can see more games that allow us a little bit of freedom, that allow us to explore, and to just throw our bodies around, and then get tired and go home and eat spaghetti on toast, 
I'm for that. Let's do that. Because even as adults, even in gaming, we should be allowed to play. Thank you.